Hello, welcome back. I am Darcy Darkness and this confession is from the dark side. How are you all today in this wonderful community? I'm going to start off with a wee disclaimer. We are full of so much adult content. Some may think it may be unnecessary. Some of you may think that this isn't needed. If you are one of those people, then thanks for checking us out, but I will only say this once. If you can't stand the heat, then get the fuck out of my kitchen. Now, for everyone else who likes what we have here, then regular scheduled programming will continue. Shall we get started? Are we ready? So today, we're here to celebrate an infamous day that everybody celebrates across the world, which I don't understand why only this holiday from the UK is celebrated everywhere, but happy St. Patrick's Day, however you celebrate it. This is a special. We're going to delve into the history, the lore, of St. Patrick's Day, some facts you might be surprised by, because I was, and some you may not know, some you may not, you may know. How do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Let us know in the comments below. And blood in your pot of gold, surely not. No? So this is blood in your pot of gold, this episode, and we're going to be discussing and debunking everything St. Patrick's Day, including the movies and everything that goes along with in the horror community because it wouldn't be a horror community without celebrating special occasions and all. So, what have you heard about St. Patrick's Day? Wearing green, shamrocks, leprechauns, pots of gold, anything else? Everybody getting drunk on Guinness? Everybody getting absolutely wasted and pish and kiss me because I'm fucking... because I'm Irish pish? That's pretty much what everybody's heard of, I think. But, we're going to find out why it's celebrated as it is across the globe and the way it does. So, St. Patrick's Day was originally celebrated as an Irish religious holiday. This was to celebrate one of Ireland's patron saints. From religious services to lavish feasts to celebrate him. This then overspilled to America, obviously, because immigrants went over to America to live and obviously taking their own tradition so they can carry them on through the generations of their family. So, the tradition was to celebrate the holiday and his day by dressing in green, getting drunk in Guinness, and just another reason to go out and party. And we've all seen it. It's not just New York, it's everywhere. It's celebrated everywhere, not just in America, but all over the world. Everyone celebrates the day. There are other patron saints in the rest of the UK, by the way, not just St. Patrick. And also, a few things we can find out about St. Patrick that's got nothing to do with Ireland, even though he's associated with Ireland and is a patron saint of Ireland. So... The facts about St. Patrick. How many do you know? He wasn't actually Irish. Uh, he didn't actually arrive in Ireland until he was 16. And he was actually bought as a slave from the British to the Irish. So there's something that I did not know. And a Patrick wasn't actually his original name. It was pa Patricus, which is also known as father figure. Not only was he brought to Ireland as a slave, he was also kidnapped. So bravo. Not. Apparently he heard voices and saw things in a way that we would call visions. Like a Metatron type deal like the voice of the Lord. His purpose was to bring Christianity back to Ireland to give the Irish people faith back to the religion. He didn't actually wear the colour green apparently. He also wore blue. And again, blue was actually in the original coat of arms of Ireland. But the green I think is more like the leprechaun, the shamrock and obviously the Irish tricolour flag. Which is green white and orange. He studied Christianity and religion for 15 years in Europe. And also, if you don't wear green, it said you'll be pinched by a leprechaun. But where will you be pinched? In this day and age, if you pinch someone, it can be sexual harassment, for fuck's sake. So we can't pinch people, you know. He wrote two works that were in Latin, and the writings were Confessio, which is the Declaration, and Espitola, which is the Letters of the Soldier of Coroticus. And the later was said to be facts about his life. His vision was to bring faith again back to the Irish people and it was down to a sinful secret that he kept guarded and no one knew what it actually was. But he felt he was being punished by God. But to overcome this, he would bring faith back to the uh, Irish people, uh, try and repent for his sins, and then God would forgive him. Okay. So there was a fable of St. Patrick be, uh, banishing all snakes. And they were all they all slithered into sea. But again, archaeologists have found that snakes are actually not native to Ireland, but it was a metaphor for, you know, like the serpent. The serpent in the Garden of Eden, the devil, evil, and how he was like casting out evil. That's 
what the snakes is supposed to represent. The shamrock is said to represent the Holy Trinity, like the Celtic knot, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And apparently he used shamrocks to describe Christianity to Irish pagans, because apparently Irish pagans needed extra education on someone else's faith. Hmm, okay then. But there is no proof he actually wore a shamrock. Where is he buried? Now, this is a head scratcher. Apparently people don't know. Good question. No one is actually sure. So it's a mystery there. A plot for a horror movie, finding his resting place, maybe a ritual or maybe a vision, who knows, maybe they stumble across his tomb or his grave, maybe gets visions, kind of like a wee sort of similar to like Stigma, you never know, maybe see what he, what he actually was, who he actually was, imagine having to explain to people that St. Patrick wasn't what he seemed to be, or like some old drunk who only saw hallucinations when he was wasted. Again, I'm not trashing on anybody's holiday, I'm just coming up with plots that are coming up in my head. So, St. Patrick's Day traditions. Do you do any of these? Let us know in the comments below. Eating cabbage and bacon, apparently, because cabbage, again, was incredibly cheap. Corned beef is actually an American tradition, not Irish. So when you see people eating corned beef and cabbage, it's actually, obviously, immigrants from Ireland that have moved over to the States. Rocking a shamrock, even though shamrocks weren't worn by the saint himself, but more of a talking piece about Christianity. At the end of the night, traditionally shamrocks were drowned in the last whiskey of the night, as the devil comes for dishonest, the dishonest, and to toast the man who drove the snake slash evil out of Ireland, apparently. A whole lot of consumption of Guinness, it's drank five times more on St. Patrick's Day than any other day of the year. I hate this stuff, and the first time I tried it was my dad um, at New Year, Hogmanay. And I said, try it, it'll be nice, just try it. I think I was like 9 or 10, and I drank it, it got in my mouth, it fizzed up, I didn't, it felt weird and foamy in my mouth, and I, and I looked at him and I shook my head, and he says, do you not like it? And I said, no. So he goes, well, spit it out, so I spat it back in his drink. And you would think that would put him off. No, he still drank it. So sharing is caring when you're trying to get your underage child drunk or let them taste that alcoholic. So at Leprechaun, they hunt by following the taps of their cobbler's hammers. Leprechauns have said to be ma only male. So how they're created without women sounds legit. Apparently that's the mystery of the fact that they're all male. Pinching, assaulting them. Continuing the leprechaun tradition by pinching people who are wearing blue is the colour, not green. As pictured, um, the saint has been shown to be wearing this colour, not green. But again, like I said, it was in the original coat of arms of Ireland. So enjoying the music of the Irish people. So get them dropkick Murphys, blasting people. Get them blasting real good. Uh, watching Irish dancing, nope. Uh, this was huge in the 90s. Um, I remember like in school lots of people just randomly deciding that they want to be Michael Flatley and it's just like, nope, it's weird. I believe, is it not Chandler, I think? And it's Chandler or Joey and Friends. He absolutely is scared of his legs and that's pretty much what I'm like too. The music was enough. Going to chapel, sorry, church, if you want to be traditional instead of getting wasted, go pray the evil away. Because technically it's a religious celebration day, which technically should be sober, but hey. Stateside it has been a common tradition to dye the Chicago River green. Yet the dye was originally used to show for traces of sewage, but apparently it's so pretty they keep it. Kiss me, I'm Irish. Can you even get away with that now? Probably not. If you kiss the famous Blarney Castle Stone, this would give the kisser the gifts of charm and persuasive speech. So does drinking alcohol and finding yourself a drunk woman or man who's in the same level of drunkness to kiss you and probably go home when you does the same and has the same effect. So you don't need to go about kissing stones. Don't know who the fuck's been to that stone first, man. Germ. So the gift of the gab. Definitely not. TG and definitely acceptable for this podcast. Parades. Again, I don't think parades are much big here. Um, America, yes. Uh, Irish slang and phrases and some are actually Celtic and not just used in Ireland. They're actually used in Scotland as well. Staying sober, as I discussed earlier. 
Yes, I shit you not. This is religious holiday. Alcohol would actually not be consumed, even though this is a very drunk holiday. The Catholic community would remain dry for this holiday and not join in in the drunk shenanigans that everyone else is doing. Be different, stay sober, people. Remember the stories will be boring, but at least you won't be hung over the next day. So, why horror movies and St. Patrick's Day? So, what would be the movies of choice that you would watch on St. Patrick's Day? I have a few and I'm going to break them down in my own unique way. So, to start us off, it would not be St. Patrick's Day without talking about the leprechaun. Yes, that fucking little creepy dude. Uh, the original movie had Jennifer Aniston, one of our early as fuck roles, and these movies are creepy and cringy, but Warwick Davis plays the evil leprechaun and he's fucking, he was brilliant. So, not only going to freak you out, but will hunt you down and get his gold back in any way he possibly can, because stealing a leprechaun's pot of gold, what the fuck? Are you mental? Deranged? Because he's coming after you and it's not going to be pretty, people. So don't steal anything at all, especially not from a fucking leprechaun. They have the supernatural ability to fuck you up in any shape or form. So just be good or be smart and crafty, okay, if you're going to go for it. Red Clover. So Billy Zane battling against unbelievable mythical creatures in the form of a vicious mental leprechaun. Do you see the pattern here? Who has, of course, been unleashed by a Karen, of all things. So not celebrating St. Patrick's Day then, Karen decides, you know, what she's going to do. For that is that she's going to just go all superstition. Like, 60 years free of this evil wee midget and she just had to unleash him, didn't she? She's a Karen, people. Karens have minds of their own and they do things to suit themselves. They don't give a fuck about the repercussions of their actions. Even when it affects them, they still try to blame others. Unselfish for doing that. Don't be a Karen. Just sit this one out. Have a sober, uneventful St. Patrick's Day and don't awaken that wee fucker to terrorise the neighbourhood and bring death and destruction. Just behave, Karen. Or even Kevin. Maniac Cop. Not in Ireland, but New York. Don't they automatically class themselves as Irish, though, for the month of March? So they're like Irish adjacent in New York. Are being murdered, these people, by a crazy New York cop. But we have Bruce the Chin Campbell being framed for the crimes he didn't commit. Does anyone else not want to throw their body onto Bruce fucking Campbell to save him? Is it just me? Let me know in the cam in the comments. Would you throw yourself as a human shield for Bruce Campbell and save him? Throw your body as a human shield. Help a man out. So the real perpetrator is actually undead and terrorising everyone to seek his revenge, as you do on St. Patrick's Day. Seek out to destroy everyone and everything that gets in your way. Unlucky Charms. Another cheesy and cringy movie obscure whenever you decide to watch it is unlucky. So five women in a competition to be the new face of and body of a lingerie line by DD Devil or Triple Devil. Because one mythical mentalist wasn't enough, she had to bring forth them all. And they in turn take the souls of these women who are competing to wear fancy panties and become famous, of course. Lose their souls and their lives in the process. What would you do for fame and clout? Would you invoke the powers of evil to bring forth all these demonic entities all in favour of money, fame and a career? It's a bit much to say the least. Is that what it takes to make it in Hollywood? Invoking the evil? Muck. It says it all in the name. Known for its nudity. Sign me up. Yes, I am easily pleased, aren't we all? So nudity, this movie premiered, premiered at none only than the Playboy Mansion, no hustler. So when you manage to survive getting through an ancient burial ground with your life and your dignity and keep cod of all things. So they have to try, stay alive and stay away from the evil entity from the marshy lands of the ancient burial ground and the entity wants you to pay with your life. Are you up for that challenge? Sounds like uh, one to watch. The Halo, I think. Halo, Halo. Hallow, A-L-L-O-W. So instead of cringy and cheesy and unbelievable plot stories and twists for this St. Patrick's Day, we have an actual horror movie that's based on Celtic fol folklore. So giving us an actual irish theme movie for an Irish holiday and celebration of a non-Irish saint. So a new couple from not from around these parts moves into a small village and they aren't treated very nice because they are outsiders. This happens in small places. They don't like strangers around these parts type thing. This couple has been treated awfully by the locals. Yes, it happens. And they start to hear the lore about the forest, the forest, about the lore, about the stories, 
that have been passed down through the generations about the halo, sorry, the halo, the forest and the darkness that it's that it brings. The couple have moved with their family and apparently baby stealing fae are in the hail in the hallow. So being treated bad- badly could be a sign of move the fuck on, don't settle with your new addition and maybe set up somewhere else where you're not going to have baby stealing fae. It could be a warning that it was the town that were warding them off to protect them so that they don't have to suffer the loss that the many families before them have had to or they just don't want the trouble that it caused by these babies be by these baby eating fae that inhabit the forest or the hollow. I love folklore and seeing movies that touch upon old stories and bringing them to life is another way to inject new life and interest into the old world and their ways and the lore that intertwines the stories together that are traditionally told by the elder of the family and passed on down throughout the generations so that we all can have a fun time storytelling and keep traditions alive. The Canal A struggling film archivist is losing his mind, thinking his wife is cheating, so high paranoia, high chance of a mental breakdown, seeing things that aren't there and hallucinating, he finds out his home where he lives with his wife was home to such a horrific murder. This doesn't help in the way that much David is feeling right now, so much unknown and uncertainty of what is real and what his brain is actually creating and playing tricks in him, making his reality feel as if he doesn't know what is real and what isn't. His brain has actually shown him what is actually happening, what is in his head, but it's also he's sabotaging himself in his life, and he doesn't know how, know what is reality and what is his paranoia. Like I said, our brains are incredibly smart and adaptable, so what is real and what is fake? This movie doesn't just have the main character doubting himself, but, but also you, the viewer. Let us pray. So this is an Irish film, but it's based in my neck of the woods, in Scotland. Some people think we are one and the same. We are not. We are all part of the United Kingdom, but we are very different. Celtic countries have a lot of similarities, but we are different. We don't even sound the same. So I hit and run, but the victim is nowhere to be seen. Then, after some digging, the victim is found, but he's already been dead for 20 years. So things start to unravel, as they do, and so does everything around. Six, who is a mysterious undead gentleman who was the victim of being hit by the car. Can the driver be tried for knocking over an undead person? If in fact he's already undead, what was that, a mistake or a typo, or have we brought hell on earth to the small Scottish town, not Irish? Six can live in your mind rent free, set up shop and terrorise you from the inside out. He has the ability to not only see your sins and secrets and your trauma, but he'll use them to taunt you and bring your justice bring your justice and how to eventually. That sounds legit. So you want gory and misidentified UK countries of origin this St. Patrick's Day? Then watch this creative, glorified movie all wrapped up in its own fucked up bow, ready for you to open and enjoy. You're welcome. The Devil's Doorway. Really don't all love a Devil's Doorway flash bell. So, do you like the who stumbled upon this footage and this is real people when it's obviously not type of movie? Then look no further. This movie title gives me Adult vibes of the triple X variety, yet disappointingly it is not. But it has a past simple time, like based in the 1960s, to a priest investigating a miracle of all things. You know, like Jeebus on a crisp or in toast or something like that. Like simple. This is the statue of the Virgin Mary and she's bleeding. Well, she's a woman. We bleed every month for like a huge chunk of our lives. I don't know what all the fuss is about. The movie is full of the predictable cliches of this genre, but it would be a, it wouldn't be a found footage movie without them, so we expect it. So dark secrets and yada yada. The hole in the ground. This movie is brought to you by the guy who failed to capture the same energy as the original franchise, Evil Dead, and his own telling of the story, The Evil Dead Rises. Just stop fucking with Bruce's franchise. If it doesn't feature Ash, it's not The Evil Dead. Okay. So a single mother decides to set up her own a new life with her young son in the Irish countryside. Sounds good so far, right? Then her son starts acting strangely again, not surprising since his parents have split up and he's moved somewhere different and his life has changed, his family, his home life, etc. Reasonable changes that could be the conclusion to this event, but I will play along with the narrative. So she blames the sinkhole that's close to where they are living on her son's new strange and weird behaviours, but not the situation they are living in, that's okay, blame it on something else, 
not you or your ex, or both. So she has to take it upon herself to find out how to save her son, or is it too late? Has the sinkhole won, or has the lore of the folk scared you enough to use this as the reason for your children's behaviour changing? Is it always supernatural, or myths and legends, but actually reality in this? I think it's okay, but I looked way more into the mental health side of things and the susceptible behaviours of the family as they had gone through enough. But moving to the countryside opens up all the fear of evil when someone, when something is so beautiful around you, it's obvious that it's hiding something more dark and sinister that not all onlookers can see or even imagine until it's too late and it's already taken over. You are not my mother. Not very nice thing to say, but hey. A mother goes missing and her behaviour is different when she finally returns to her family. So the family are in mourning for her old self. And it's clear this movie is more about the mother-daughter relationship and how she knows her mother isn't the same, not the mother she can remember of or something. It's definitely wrong with her and not them, the people that have changed and sometimes for the worse. No doubt this would, es- this would estrange the family if she is moaning that this is not her mother and maybe just cannot remember because of the trauma of their mother's disappearance. This could make you feel that your mother has returned and isn't who she claims to be or maybe you're holding on to a thought of something that may or may not have existed in the first place, especially if the rest of the family isn't noticing it and are just as happy she is back. Or is it that you're the only intelligent one in the family that has noticed some gigantic red flags that you once your once mother who you loved dearly and had gone missing has returned and is clearly not the same woman that gave birth to you or is the mother the same woman that gave birth to you or is mother dear is actually dark and sinister and there's something else in the mix an unexplained instance that is destroying her better be all dora and get exploding and investigate shouldn't we makes you guess makes you question everything you've seen if you like horror with some intellect then this one is for you So that was some of the movies that I have seen and I have discussed that I think would be great choices for celebrating St. Patrick's Day. If you don't want to be sober or get drunk and celebrate a patron saint who wasn't even Irish. Am I shitting on this holiday a wee bit too much? Let me know in the comments below. Happy St. Patrick's Day from the both of us at Confessions from the Dark Side. What will you be doing to celebrate? What horror movie do you feel best encapsulates this day of celebration and which movie, one movie, is a must on this day? Have you learned anything new about this today from this podcast? Are there any traditions from where you live that you do on this day? Please let us know in the comments below. If you like content like this, please remember to go over to Confessions and the Dark Side social media platforms, which is Twitter, which is X, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Amazon Music, Spotify and Buzzsprout. Let us know what you think over on our social media and let's get chatting about this topic, all topics, the community as a whole. Let's grow our community and spread how awesome the community actually is. If you want to get to know us as individuals then you can check out the links below which for me, I'm Darcy, you've got YouTube, Instagram, Twitch and Kick. Luna has YouTube, Twitch and Instagram for Luna X Rising. And if you want to reach out to us at any point for anything, a hey, or collaboration, or collaboration not for actual products, I'm talking about a guest in the podcast, or if you want to just chat about the the up-and-coming projects that are coming out in the horror community that you know that we're very, very passionate about, and we do like to tell you about, and let you hear about, then you can email us at confessionsfromthedarkside at gmail.com, or for myself, it's behindthemasterviews at gmail.com, and Luna is lunarxrising at gmail.com. And today we have discussed and broke down Blood in My Pot of Gold, Bloody Leprechauns, and Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is the St. Patrick's Day special here for Confessions from the Dark Side. I am, I am Darcy Darkness, and that was Blood in My Pot of Gold. Later.